love communication boards because they're the best way to give children the visual supports they need to learn language. And my board is set up in a very strategic way that helps children easily combine words together to create sentences. When you're using a communication board, the most important thing to remember is to use it all the time because children need lots of experiences to learn new vocabulary. So when you're getting started, the first thing you need to do is to find a motivating activity. This should be something that makes your child smile and laugh. It could be a special toy or playing their favorite video on YouTube. The key is that the motivation has to be there. Otherwise, we won't have kids buying into this new way of communicating. And in the beginning, that's the most important part. The next step is to make it visible. Put the board on the table so that it's facing your child and they have easy access to it. Then choose a word. I like to keep it simple and start with something like go. You can make the train go. You can say go to turn on their favorite video or to give some type of sensory input like tickles or squeezes. If you're using a favorite food, you can use the word eat. Or if your child is really motivated by a particular toy, you can use the word play. Just choose a single word and then start modeling. All you have to do is touch the word on the communication board and say it at the same time. So let me give you an example. I picked my super motivating activity, tickling, and I'm gonna use the word go. So I put the communication board next to the child and I say go while pointing to it on the board. Then tickles. I quickly stop the tickles and model it again, go, and start the tickling again. I keep repeating this until the child starts to get the hang of it. By now your child should be laughing and happy. The next step is to pause. Have your child primed and ready for the tickles, but then instead of modeling, just wait and see what happens. A lot of times kids will look up at you and be like, what's the deal? Because they're expecting you to continue the routine. And this is the moment where you give them the word to ask for what they want. So you can point to the word go and see if they'll point after you or if they try to say the word on their own. When you're working on communication, I always tell parents two very important things. First, praise every communication attempt. This could be as simple as making a sound or making eye contact or touching anywhere on the board. They don't have to touch the right word. It just has to be some type of initiation. And my other catchphrase is inspire, don't require. We never want to force a child to communicate with us. Instead, we want to be strategic about choosing highly motivating activities and then tempting them to communicate. Some kids pick this up right away and other kids need some time and lots of repetition before they get the hang of it. Remember, this is a completely different way of communicating. The only way a child will learn is if adults around them show them how to do it. Start small with one activity for 15 minutes a day and then you can slowly build up from there. And remember, a little progress every day adds up to big results.